Hello, welcome to my first Django screencast. Today we're going to look at what it takes to implement the Django syndication framework into an existing Django application. We're going to be working with a blogging application today. We have articles and we have some sections. But other than that, there's not much more here. And what we want to be able to do is implement an RSS feed so subscribers can subscribe to our blogging application and find out whenever we post new articles. So let's get started. Before we get started, let's take a look at our models.py module so that we're all on the same page. As I mentioned, we've got a section class. I'm not going to go through the fields in detail. Uh, the source code will be available for download. And we also have an articles class. One thing I do want to point out is that in our articles class, we have body and body HTML attributes. The reason for this is that we generate our blog posts in the body as markup or textile syntax. We then store the post generated syntax in the body HTML field. I want to point this out just so that when we use it later on, you won't be thrown by this field. In addition, I want to point out one other item, and that is that we've implemented get absolute URL methods in both of our classes. You need to make sure that you've implemented these and that they're working properly before you attempt to add syndication to your existing application. In the case of the articles, we're using generic date-based views. So in that case, we pass in a year, a month, a day, and a slug. We've also implemented the permalink method. For our sections class, we've also implemented get absolute URL. And in this case, we're just using the generic object detail. And in this case, we're passing in a slug. Okay, let's take a look at our URLs.py model. I always like to start with our URLs.py module because that's how we represent our application to the rest of the world. To begin with, we're going to need to add a URL of patterns that matches to our SS feed. In this case, we want to implement something that looks like slash blog slash feeds slash latest. And this will point to the latest feeds for our blogging application. We're going to start with the URL patterns that comes from django.contrib.syndication views. This is where the syndication framework lives. And the pattern match that we're going to use is going to start with feeds slash and we're going to match a pattern. It's going to be a URL in almost all cases you're going to want to have something that looks like this. The reason is that that URL pattern match will be a lookup into a feed dictionary that we'll create later on. The actual class name is feed, feed and it requires a dictionary that has a key of feed dict that points to a dictionary that we're going to create called feeds. It's a little confusing at this point, but just follow along. Next, we want to implement our feed dictionary that we point, just pointed to down here. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and add a feed dictionary that's going to have latest, because remember, we're going to use latest to point to our latest blog entries. And we're going to give it a class name that's going to be in our feeds class, which we haven't written yet. So at this point, let's just call it latest articles. We also want to do one other thing, and that is that in order to reference this latest articles, which we haven't written yet, we do want to import that into this class. So we're going to say from the blog dot blog dot feeds import latest articles. Now this doesn't exist yet, but we're going to do this next. So let's add a feeds class to our blogging application. 
I generally just put it in a feeds.py file. You can do whatever you want since you're importing it, but that seems like a reasonable, reasonable place to put it. To begin with, we need to import the Django contrib syndication feeds feed class because we're going to inherit from that class in order to create our own feed. We also are going to need to import our model. Well, let me get this right. So we start with a class and we're going to call it latest articles. That's going to inherit from feed. And to begin with, we're going to do something that's a little, uh, I would say non-standard, but something that I like to do in every case. And that is that we're going to specify our title template and our description template. And the reason we're doing that is because you'll find that your template ends up being, get that right, your template ends up being the same exact thing in almost every case for a particular application. And so instead of accepting the fault, the defaults, which would be the name of our URL pattern, latest underscore title dot HTML and latest underscore description dot HTML, we're just going to use feed slash titles dot HTML and feed slash description dot HTML. That way, if we decide to implement another feed, we won't, uh, have to re-implement the templates for those. We also need to add some information now about our feed. Some of the information we need is the title. So we're just going to say title and it's going to be the name of your blog or whatever you want. In this case I'm just going to say empty thoughts. It's the name of the blog. And you also need a description. And we'll just say latest articles in the empty thoughts blog. Put whatever you want here. And we also need a link. And in this case, the link for each article is going to reference slash blog. Because that is what we have uh, right here as a default for our blogging application. Now each of these attributes can be implemented as attributes as we've seen here, or they can be implemented as methods. And we'll see how they're implemented in methods in a later screencast. But in this case, we don't need to implement them as methods uh, because this is just the latest feeds for our entire blog. Now the last item is the most important item, and that's that we have to implement an items method. So we're going to say def items self. So, and in this case, we need to return the articles for the feed. So it's going to be article objects order by pub date. And I'm just going to send the last five. You can do the last five, 10, 15, whatever you feel is appropriate. Okay, we're in good shape now. We have our feeds class. And we have our URL pattern match that will send us to our feeds class. The only thing missing at this point is our templates. And we've specified that we want our templates to be feed slash title dot HTML and feed slash description dot HTML. So let's implement those now. In my templates directory, I'm going to go ahead and add a new directory, new folder called feeds and a new file. We'll go ahead and do the title first. Whoa. Title HTML. And this file is going to be pretty simple. The template gets passed in in context an object called OBJ or OBJ for short. Um, that is the object to our latest article, each item. So in this case, we're just going to render for the title obj.title. Pretty simple, huh? We're going to do the same thing for our description file. And you can see why now that I didn't want to create separate templates for every type of feed we might be using in our blog. 
So in, in the description HTML, we're going to implement obj.bodyHTML. All right. Okay, now that we have everything in place, let's take a look and see if our blog feed comes up. We're just going to have to type it in the URL here uh, because we don't have anything implemented yet in our master template, but we'll do that in a second. So it was slash blog slash feeds slash latest. And there it is. So you can see that we have an RSS feed implementing our existing blogging application. So that's great and it's a good first start, but what we'd like to be able to do is make it easy for people by providing a little RSS symbol up here. And in order to do that, we need to change the master template. I've got a base template here. And up in the head section, we're going to go ahead and add a new alternate link. that is going to point to our feed. And we're going to come back to the href here in a second. The type is going to be application slash XML, whoops, RSS plus XML. And the title is going to be whatever you want the title to be when you hover over. So in this case, we'll just say feed of latest articles. You can make that synchronize with whatever description is if you want. So back to the href. In order to make it easy, I like to use the URL patterns uh, template. And so to do that, we have to go back to our urls.py module and add a URL method around our pattern match. So we're going to add URL and now we have to give it a name. So the name we're going to give it here is going to be whoops blog feeds. That should be good enough. Or we can say latest feeds, I guess. Once we do that, and we can come back to our whoops and come back to our base template and for our URLs for our href here we're going to specify that it points to URL latest feeds latest I guess it's a little bit redundant I probably should have put blog feeds here and that's where I was going originally so let's do that blog feeds We'll go ahead and come back to our URL, name it blog feeds. Now the reason we specify blog feeds because that's the name of the URL pattern. And then we pass into that latest, which will be the URL matching pattern here, which will point to latest here and we'll load up the correct class in our feeds.py module. So let's go back and look at it. We've got a link release alternate, and the href here is URL blog feeds. And we're passing into that latest. Okay, let's see if that works. We'll refresh our browser, and sure enough, we have a feed icon here. And if you click that, it goes to the same page. But it makes it easy for the user to uh, subscribe. It also works with uh, RSS software that, d that does auto detection. So it's a good thing to have in your website. Thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you soon at the next Django Screencast.